Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to perform some HTTP GET requests using the ASP32 and the Arduino core. So, uh, to get started, we need to include some libraries in order for us to be able to connect the ASP32 to the Wi-Fi network. So, we need to, to be able to reach the internet and this is the library we need, the Wi-Fi.h library. Additionally, uh, in order to have access to a, a, an object of a class that exposes a very easy to use and high level API to make the requests, we need to include this HTTP client uh, library. Uh, otherwise, we will need to, to do the requests uh, using the uh, lower level API like the, the Wi Fi client, like it's pretty much using sockets. I've seen a couple of examples using the sockets. Um, but personally, I think uh, this interface is much, much uh, easier to use, the HTTP client one, and for simple use cases where we don't need any particular low-level implementation, uh, it works uh, pretty well. So, moving on, uh, I usually declare the, the variables for the Wi-Fi network to which I'm going to connect the SP32. Uh, I, I usually declare them here, so I can easily change them. Uh, we need the SSID, the network which corresponds to the network name and the password. Uh, moving on to the setup function, uh, the first thing we are going to, to do is uh, uh, starting a serial connection so we can output the results of our program. I'm doing here a small delay before starting the, the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, we may, uh, I had some troubles in the past with the previous version of the, the, the Arduino core. Uh, I think they are currently solved, but uh, I usually sometimes I do this delay before before calling the begin function in case I run into some troubles. Uh, if you don't, you can remove them. Then, uh, in order to start a connection to the Wi-Fi network, uh, we just need to call the begin method of, of um, this Wi-Fi object that I'm using here, which is basically um, an external variable that is, that is exposed in this uh, library and uh, using this external variable uh, we can um, we can simply connect to the Wi-Fi with this call uh, this begin method receives as input the network name and the password so after that uh, we are going to do the connection the Wi-Fi connection in the in the simplest way which is looping um, and waiting for the status of the, the connection to be uh, equal to this enumerated value which means that we are already connected to the network I, I always put here a, a small delay between each uh, iteration of the loop so you are not constantly uh, constantly pulling the, the, um, this, this connection so after that, uh, when this, this loop ends uh, and assuming that everything goes alright, we are, we are not doing your a proper error handling for simplicity you should do it in a, in a real application use case but after this loop ends uh, we know that we should be connected to the Wi-Fi network then we'll do the requests the actual requests in the Arduino loop uh, periodically since this is just a, a test so the first thing we are going to do is checking if you are still connected to the Wi-Fi network because if we are not, it doesn't make sense to, to try to make the HTTP request since uh, it will simply fail. Uh, if we are indeed connected, uh, the next thing we need to do is to declare an object of this HTTP client class um, which is uh, made available by the previous include I've mentioned in the beginning of this video and uh, which we will use to, to make the actual uh, request. So, the first thing we need to do is initialize um, everything uh, and to do that we just need to call this begin method of our HTTP object and passing as input uh, the endpoint or the, in this case the URL of the website that we are trying to reach. Uh, in this format HTTP colon and two slashes and the, the website. Um, basically I'm going to, to reach a fake and online uh, testing API called the JSON placeholder. You can see here the, the expected format of the output. Uh, basically, it represents some uh, some potential 
um, uh, structure, data structure for representing uh, comments in a website. And with this query parameter, I'm filtering the, the to get just the one with ID 10. This is not very important. We are just going to print this to the console to confirm that we are uh, indeed receiving what is expected. So getting back to the code, uh, after we have initialized the the, uh, the request, we in order to perform it to, to perform the actual get request, we simply need to call this get method which receives no arguments and returns a numeric value. Uh, this numeric value, uh, I'm calling it here HTTP code, but in reality, uh, it is an HTTP code returned by the server. If the, the, the value of this integer is greater than zero, uh, because if it is lesser than zero, then it is an internal error in the SP32 API. So basically you need to, to understand uh, these two ranges of values. So, immediately, we check, uh, as I've mentioned, if the return value is greater than zero, because otherwise it will be an internal error, and thus in this else condition, I'm printing here the, the, the um, uh, uh, sentence indicating that there was an error, an internal error. We are not analyzing which type of error, uh, there are multiple that may happen, but we are going to focus on the epipath here and assuming that everything will go alright. So, moving on, uh, assuming that we, we enter in this uh, if condition, uh, then we'll need to, to obtain the payload uh, of the response. Basically the JSON I've, I've show you, be, showed to you before. And to do it we simply call this getString method on our HTTP object right after uh, making the, the request. This will uh, return a string uh, value with the payload uh, of the, the, the answer uh, of the request. After that we'll simply print uh, the HTTP code just just to confirm that uh, it is uh, uh, 200 an OK uh, HTTP uh, code and then we print the payload we should match the JSON I've showed you uh, before at the end of this uh, of this uh, sequence we should call the end method of our HTTP object in order to free the resources um, allocated by it uh, this is important to, to not leave uh, things hanging uh, in our ASP32 and uh, it will avoid uh, problems after doing uh, uh, various requests. After that, just to finish the, the main loop, I'm uh, doing a small delay here so we are uh, so to avoid being constantly sending the requests to the server. I'm doing a small 10 seconds delay. We can you can play with this well if you want. So, um, I've already uploaded the codes um, to my SP32. I'm going to show you the serial monitor. I have uh, my actually uh, my my Wi-Fi network credentials, so it is running. We need to wait a little bit since it is um, it it was already running in that loop. And since we have the delay, here here we go. Uh, we have received the the, the first thing, the 200. HTTP OK code, uh, which matches what is expected, and then we receive the structure. Uh, we print the structure of the the response of the payload of the response, which is a data structure with the JSON representing a potential uh, comment uh, data structure in a website. It's not really that important. The main point here is checking which methods of the API we need to use. So as you can see. Uh, the program keeps spinning and, and uh, making new requests and basically this is it, it's very simple to do these requests but one thing I would like to highlight is that uh, and I've, I've seen a lot of people um, uh, running into troubles with this and making some comments at my blog uh, which is uh, this code is not suitable to uh, perform HTTPS requests with yes at the end standing for secure um, the, the, it needs another another way of doing the requests. I will show you in in future uh, tutorials. Uh, so this is this can be used to reach uh, websites uh, through HTTP. Uh, the implication of this is that the the, um, the information sent to the website is sent in plain text, and the information retrieved 
uh, from the, the, the website or the server is also in plain text so uh, any any attacker can can steal it and analyze the content but if it is not uh, sensitive information if it is not a uh, thing that that uh, needs to be secured with encryption then this works perfectly fine so this is it thank you very much for watching uh, hope you have enjoyed